in the establishment, the re-establishment of the Islamic form of government. الإخوان المسلمين في هذا يطبقوا استراتيجية جرامشي جرامشي فيلسوف إيطالي لما كان في السجن فكر أن العمال طبق العاملة مش ممكن تأخذ السلطة السياسية إلا إذا أخذت السلطة الثقافية يعني الثقافة متاعها انتشرت بين الناس بالإعلام والتعليم في كل مكان وقتها تأخذ السلطة You have people who are being deceived by a campaign of deception, brazen lies that are presented as the truth and abetted by uh, those in government or the media that embrace it and then ensure that it's perceived as the truth. Other documents found in Ismail El Barasi's archive in 2004 provide more detail on the Brotherhood's tactics. This document reads, No doubt America is the ideal location to train the necessary resources to support the movement worldwide with its need for brothers who are trained in different fields, administrative, media, political, and others. We encourage Islamic centers to assign scholarship and give scholarship for five students every year. Imagine if we could put this five years from now. You will have an army of lawyers. You will have an army of politicians, and an army of journalists, and an army of teachers who go to schools, universities, who can educate people on the history of Islam and the true Islam. You see so many organizations working on so many fronts to use our very system, the systems that they deplore, our democracy, our constitution, our rule of law, our tolerance, that's what they use to exploit their message, that's what they use to protect themselves and to create a facade around them that would allow them to internally operate and seek to achieve their true, often unstated, objectives. False accusations of racism and Islamophobia are routinely made against critics of radical Islam. When I was new on the editorial board with the Dallas Morning News, we had a scheduled meeting with Dr. Syed Saeed, who was at that time the head of the Islamic Society of North America, the largest Muslim organization in the country. Dr. Saeed came in and sat down with us and gave a long discourse about peace and tolerance and Islam and religion in America. You, you couldn't possibly object to anything he had to say. And his final message to us was, you journalists need to stand with us and help stamp out religious intolerance and bigotry. Great. And I asked him in the Q&A period, Dr. Said, if you really do believe in peace and tolerance, why do you have on your board? And I went through one by one the names of people who sat on his board, Muslim leaders, and pointed out the radical things they had said. One had spoken at the death of the Jews rally outside the White House in 2000. I said, how do you reconcile your st stance of public stance of peace with that? Well, he got so angry, he shook his fist at me and said, this is like Hitler's Germany. You will repent of what you're saying. He never answered the question, just shook his fist again and talked about Islamophobia and bigotry and my need to repent and how one day I would repent of being so insulting. So after I wrote my column uh, criticizing Dr. Saeed, I became what a local Muslim group called on their website, the new face of hate. A picture went up on their website and they began to talk about me as the sort of person who is going to lead to violence against Muslims, pogroms against Muslims in Dallas. I signed on to their email listserv just to see what they were saying. With my own name, no deception there, they said we want to make Roger a joke in this town. It was very personal. 
but it taught me something about the way they work. They weren't willing to take me on and refute me factually or, or refute my logic. They wanted to run around behind the scenes and convince everybody that I was a raving lunatic who was going to get Muslims beat up here. What's disingenuous and, and, I'm, and why we keep falling for it is a mystery to me is this idea that you can keep you, you can keep presenting little bits and pieces of your agenda, moving it slowly along. And, uh, and crying foul every time something happens you don't like. Oh my God, you're being mean to us again. We can close our eyes and pretend it doesn't exist. We can call everybody a, a, a bigot or an Islamophobe if they even talk about it, but you're not gonna solve the problem and the problem's increasing exponentially. Even when Muslims speak out against radicalization in a congressional hearing, if they are not part of the Brotherhood Legacy Network, they are made into boogeymen. I welcome anyone to walk into any mosque in the United States and ask the name of organizations present here. CARE, MPAC, IGNA. You'll get people that know that organization inside that mosque. And these are organizations with a grassroots touch in the American Muslim community. Bullshit. Uh, the same for Dr. Jasser, and you will not find that his name is well known. That's because he's a, a real Islam Muslim. With a Facebook profile that threatened his safety. The name of the page? Zudi Jasser is a... Uncle Tom. Called him an Uncle Tom. His own, who his own is a people. Person in the community. This guy. They demonize him rather than deal with the ideas. The others that may be fearful of speaking out will see that and say, look what happens to this guy when he speaks out. So we're not going to do it. At the end of the day, it's a moral corruption within a certain segment that is using our religion, hijacking it for a theopolitical movement that is not only domestic, but it is global. You think? We here at One American News want to take a moment to say thank you to the thousand. Little fast forward here, folks. And oh, dang! October 1990. There it is. At a hotel just off a busy highway in Philadelphia, a secret meeting is called to order in October 1993. Attending are two dozen American supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood and leaders of Hamas, a Palestinian Islamic terrorist group. Ismail Abarasi, the keeper of the explanatory memorandum, is among them. Their agenda, how to derail recent events in the Middle East peace there process you go. between Israel and the PLO. Yeah. The FBI was watching. It goes all the way back to... Really got heavy in 94 with Clinton, pandering to these guys. During the meetings, the group used code in an effort to confuse anyone who might be listening. The code for Hamas was Samah. Hamas spelled backwards. <laughs> Hamas, a Muslim Brotherhood organization, at this time was carrying out acts of violence in Israel, including kidnappings, drive-by shootings, and stabbing attacks. It became a U.S.-designated terrorist group in 1995. They even specifically discuss how do we keep ourselves from being defined as terrorists. They recognize when the doors are shut, they recognize that supporting Hamas is supporting terrorism. They know what the word means. And the concern was if it is revealed what we truly support, then we will no longer be able to operate in this country the way in which we have been able to operate to date. Thanks, Obama. Obstacles. Clinton, First, Bush. market Hamas terrorism to Muslims. And second, how to disguise Hamas's terrorist agenda for non-Muslims. The men gathered here were responsible for Hamas fundraising. And the only way to open wallets was to win hearts and minds. Here you have individuals, their true political goal, which is to represent Hamas's interest in America. And they find that their constituency is too small, so they 
broaden the constituency to the entire Muslim population, which is the classic Islamist ideological tool, which is to take a local political conflict and broaden it to the entire Muslim ummah, our community. For these men gathered in Philadelphia, the mission was just one campaign in a war. <laughs> War is deception. Once you accept the fact that the system that you're living under at the present time is illegitimate, okay, then you're prepared to do anything illegal, um, underhanded, deceptive. Um, the whole thing is illegitimate. You're in a war. So all bets are off. Some of those attending this meeting would be generals in this stealth war. At least two were officials from IEP, or the Islamic Association for Palestine, a Hamas front, and one of the 29 crucial groups listed in the explanatory memorandum. Omar Ahmad was president of the IAP. Accompanying him was IAP public relations director, Nihad Awad. Here on Yihad Awad's real views on Hamas. Some things. Um, I used to support the PLO, and I used to be the president of the General Union of Palestine Students, which is part of the PLO here in the United States. But after I researched the, the situation inside Palestine and outside, I am uh, in support of uh, the Hamas movement more than the PLO, not because Hamas is disruptive and in, involved in, in violence. No. Uh, I know that uh, this movement, as an Islamic movement, has not been objectively reported in the United States. Within weeks of this speech, Hamas began introducing suicide bombings as a strategy in Israel. The Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas advertising themselves as being peaceful organizations was nothing more than a pragmatic ruse to convince the world that uh, they were mainstream and moderate. You need only scratch the surface to see that, uh, in fact, they were not. Within a year of the Philadelphia meeting, Omar Ahmad and Nihad Awad would help to rebrand the Hamas Front, IAP, as the Council on American-Islamic Relations, CARE. <laughs> 